So you may have been told that Aperture is king in planetary imaging. Well this is very true, but of course you can still get a great image with an 8 inch scope of a planet like Jupiter or Saturn. Here in my backyard with me I have a Celestron C8 telescope, it's actually a pretty good telescope. So it can not get super high resolution photos, but why does that resolution really matter if you can still capture all the details? Yes of course you can blow it up and zoom it in more, but still if you want to capture details, that's what we're talking about in this video, we're talking about details. If you want to get those details, well of course you can still capture them with the, like a C8. I used to actually own a C5, a 127 SLT, which is uh, still 5 inch, so I consider it a C5. But um, the 5 inch was actually a really good scope. I got some pretty dang good details of Jupiter with that scope too. But of course the 8 inch is going to yield much better results, which will show those photos in a minute. Now most people say that for planetary imaging, an 8 inch scope is the bare minimum to capture all the planets. And this is true, because if you want to capture like Uranus and Neptune, which obviously Neptune isn't capturable through 8 inch, but Uranus is. But if you want to capture that, like with an 8 inch scope, that's more possible. But not with a 5 inch. My 127 SLT by Celestron could not capture Neptune at all, or even Uranus, really. It couldn't capture any of those. Um, Saturn and Jupiter did really well, and even Mars. I got some decent ones of Mars with that one. But um, honestly, this 8 inch has done a lot better. Though I'm saying you could still get a lot more potential out of your scope until it's time really time to upgrade if your if your images are like blurry and maybe like you know not very sharp or whatever that has nothing to do with the aperture of your scope it has to do with either collimation focus or any of the above it can't be to do with your scope unless of course you're blowing it up really big and it's only like 200 by 200 or something then that would make a problem with you know kind of like blurring but if you're just you know keeping it its optimal size like in terms of zoom like on photoshop or whatever you're taking it into and you keep it like shrunk down when you're viewing it, if it still looks sharp, you're good to go. I mean, that that's really what it is. But what I'm trying to say is you can still get a lot more details than you think you can. Because also seeing impacts a lot more things than you think it does. Seeing is one of the biggest problems we have with planetary imaging. It affects it, I think, more than deep sky, honestly. Because every time you do deep sky, it doesn't affect it too much. It just depends on like the, depends on the, um, the object you're photographing and how far zoomed in you are, obviously. but. On this, on this telescope, my C8, actually, um, when I photograph the planets, it seeing impacts it really bad. So if you're like, you know, of course, zoomed in quite a bit, and when you're using a Barlow even, um, it gets even worse because it gets less light gathering ability, so then you're getting more of the bad seeing when you have to crank exposure and everything. Just so what I do is I'd wait for a night that looks really good, like to where it's not shaking and wobbling into all different shapes and everything, and to where you can see the details really sharply through live view, and you can see almost all of them. Of course, they're not always over, but you can still see them with your eye and they're sharp. Um, I'd wait till one of those nights and then, then I would go ahead and try to capture it and see how you come up with. So here's a good example. This is kind of like bad seeing with Jupiter. This was like okay average-ish seeing. is like eh, not very good. This was with great seeing, I think. This is a pretty good seeing with Jupiter. I don't know, I haven't gotten much better seeing than this recently because of course I live in Ohio and seeing kind of sucks here. Yeah, kind of sucks. If you have bad collimation, well, let me tell you, I had a horrible image the other night with my um, telescope. When I was trying to get the photo to look good, um, actually, the scene was great. Okay, I'll tell you this. The scene was great, but my collimation was poor, I could tell, because when I was focusing the scope, it was focusing from a weird angle. So, like, Jupiter would be right here. When it was out of focus, it would kind of do this. And it was, like, you're not supposed to really focus like that. It's supposed to focus like this, obviously. So, that's what you really want it to do. So I could tell collimation was off, so what I did was I recollimated, and oh my gosh, it changed everything. The photo was so much sharper, you could see everything. So that could be a cause of definitely being a blurry photo. Here's another big thing, focus. If you're not in good focus, just by even a tiny bit, it's gonna screw up your whole image, unlike deep sky, which you can be a little bit mad out of focus maybe, but I mean, it's still not good to be out of focus regardless, but planetary imaging, it's a lot more noticeable, so to speak. Anyways though, an 8 inch scope does have a lot of potential. My Celestron C8 has gotten some amazing images out of it. Oh, and by the way, my name is Asher at Astro Photography Quest, and if you like astrophotography videos like related to planetary imaging, deep sky astrophotography, or any kind of astrophotography in general except for solar imaging, you don't really do solar imaging, um, make sure to hit the subscribe button, like button on this video. Anyways, until next time, clear skies. Hope you enjoyed this video.